As one of the founding forces of pop, Andy Warhol collapsed the traditional boundaries between high art and popular culture. His was a radical vision of America, perhaps because of how truly democratic it was. From celebrities to soup cans, Brillo boxes to beautiful women, he celebrated the seductive powers of personalities and products alike. When asked why he painted what he painted, Warhol replied in his typically cool air, I just paint things I always thought were beautiful. Things you use every day and never think about. I just do it because I like it. I'm a commercial person. Why? Well, I've got a lot of miles to be. Better bring home the bacon. Throughout his life, Warhol never hid how much he admired wealth and status. The money paintings, as they're now known, would become some of the most resonant and complex productions of his career. Warhol grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the youngest son of working-class Slovakian immigrants. His father was a coal miner, and some of the habits of Warhol's humble roots remained with him throughout his life. Andy was extremely cheap. Tight. Tight, ma'am. Warhol was keenly aware of the intricate relationship between commerce and aesthetics. His first jobs in New York were creating illustrations for advertising agencies and magazines. Where other artists worked in studios, Warhol infamously and cheekily dubbed his workspace the factory. And it was the challenge of how to paint multiple dollar bills that led Warhol to pioneer his silkscreen technique for painting. As the story goes, the idea to paint money wasn't initially Warhol's. I do remember that one of the first things he ever did were the dollar bills. Uh, he went to Ellen Ward and said to her, I want to be a great artist. What do I do to be a great artist? And Eleanor said, well, what do you love the most? And he said, well, I suppose I love money the most. And she said, well, then paint it. Andy loved money. Andy loved money. With great attention to detail, Warhol interpreted the bills rather than just reprinted them. Whereas most of Warhol's paintings are based on photographs, here his hand is evident throughout, showcasing his talent as a draftsman and also playing on the idea of the counterfeit. If it's a fake dollar, he seems to be saying it's a real Warhol. And this bill is worth a lot more cash because of it. One dollar bill, silver certificate, is the very first dollar painting Warhol made, and it is the only hand-painted dollar. It was created simultaneously with Warhol's legendary first solo exhibition at the Ferris Gallery in 1962. Twenty years later, he painted a series of dollar signs, bold, vibrant canvases that seem almost to levitate off the wall. It can't be ignored that Warhol's colorful rendering elevates this common sign to a status similar to that of his celebrity portraits. Since Warhol began painting money, the conversations that pop art seeded about the relationship between art and commerce have become even more interesting, even more complicated. It's as though Warhol knew then that these works would accrue even greater aesthetic and critical value as American culture progressed. For his singular brilliance, his humor, and his prescience, it turns out that in Warhol, we trust.